Can you drink alcohol while training for fat loss or muscle building? The short answer is yes. As long as you stick to clean sources of alcohol and drink in moderation, you can get away with it. See you next time. Just kidding. Stick around if you want to find out more. Let's go. Hello boozers, my name is Halfpine Jacob and today we're going to talk about alcohol and fitness. We want to dial down into what alcohol does in the body and more specifically, does it interfere with weight loss and muscle building? Does that pint mean you are flushing your efforts down the toilet or is that one drink really harmless? Well, keep watching. In this video, we are going to cover the following. We are gonna take a look at how alcohol affects your overall health your sleep and your hormonal balance. We will then look at how that directly connects to both fat loss and muscle building while on the booze. And lastly, we're gonna show you how you can drink and still bank on great progress from your fitness efforts. The first thing we should say is that not drinking alcohol is probably better, either way you cut it. So if you want to make sure you're going 100% in and you don't really fancy alcohol, you've got your answer right there. Alcohol does affect your fitness in various ways, but the truth is, if you know what you're doing, you can get away with it. First, let's talk about overall health, sleep, and hormonal balance. Your body treats alcohol like a mild poison, and it's broken down in the liver. What you need to remember is that quantity matters, because while your liver is busy processing those toxins, most nutrients aren't getting absorbed. That's not a huge problem if you drink a little every now and again, but if you drink frequently and a lot, well, your body's prioritizing getting rid of the poison, the alcohol, for long periods of time and not doing much else. In terms of sleep, many people like a little drink before bed, a little whiskey, a hot toddy to help them unwind. Alcohol is a sedative, so it helps you fall asleep, but it doesn't do you good in terms of restful, deep sleep. While alcohol is being broken down by your liver, both REM sleep and deep sleep identified by delta brain waves are disrupted. This is also one of the reasons why people who drink tend to dream less during the night and more towards the early hours of the morning because their REM sleep is delayed. Not getting enough deep sleep is also a problem, but if you tend to get enough sleep, like seven to nine hours a night, then you've got a little bit more time to play with. If, on the other hand, you're one of those people that only get five to six hours sleep a night, you really don't want to interfere with the little sleep you do have. The simple takeaway message is that alcohol does interfere with sleep. And if you are gonna have a drink, you need plenty of sleep to compensate. In terms of hormonal balance, we've got good news. Alcohol does not seem to affect estrogen, testosterone, or adrenaline too much. It does seem to negatively affect the release of growth hormone, or Ramona. The connection to estrogen is also undeniable, but it's indirect, and it happens for three reasons as far as we know. One, drinking low quality alcohol often contains traces of toxins, usually found in the metal containers that it was fermented in. Trace toxins then get stored in fat cells, and a boost in estrogen can be seen. Of course, drinking high quality clean sources of alcohol solves that problem. The second reason is estrogenic factors found in one of the most popular alcohol sources, beer. If you drink beer, you likely drink other substances that promote the formation of estrogen. Although alcohol is okay in general, drinking beer is problematic with fitness. This is exacerbated by the net carbohydrate content of beer, 13 grams per can, which during fat loss can be problematic. The third reason is the disruption of sleep. If you don't sleep well, your body does not produce good levels of melatonin and it's the melatonin that suppresses estrogen production. Poor sleep equals poor melatonin. And as melatonin suppresses estrogen, you can expect estrogen to be unsuppressed. 
that means a lot more estrogen than what you would like. Okay, let's explore the connection to muscle building, followed by the connection to fat loss. In terms of muscle building, this is an interesting one. Did you know, I bet you didn't, that light alcohol consumption every now and again, up to about two or three drinks, is shown to increase both testosterone and libido. That's both for men and women. I bet you didn't know that. On the other hand, going over that does the opposite, especially for men. Women, it seems, can get away with it a little bit more, but men, oh boy. The first one or two drinks, and you start becoming a bit more confident, slowly progressing towards the status of stirred. But carry on drinking like that, and it soon starts to get sloppy, and you start talking to the walls, which is not a good look. Muscle building is influenced by testosterone, and so is fat loss. So, if a little alcohol helps testosterone, that's not a bad thing. But if you overdo it, you will be flushing your efforts down the toilet. Less is more, as they say. The other thing that alcohol does is dehydrate you substantially, and that affects your performance in the gym the next day, as well as protein synthesis. But if you don't overdo it, you should be fine. If you watched our YouTube series, you might remember us mentioning about 300 times that there are three types of muscle growth, or hypertrophy. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, myofibrillar hypertrophy, and myonuclear accretion. Now, of the studies we can find, we can say for sure that drinking alcohol does reduce the rate of myofibrillar hypertrophy, also known as protein synthesis, by interfering with something called mTOR pathway. One more thing worth mentioning regarding alcohol and testosterone is that it does damage Leydig cells in the testes, which are responsible for producing testosterone, of course. The damage, as far as we know, is irreversible. Similar to the damage you get from keeping your mobile phone in your pocket for too long. You know, right next to your crown jewels. It shouldn't be a problem with moderate drinking. So the conclusion is the same. Don't become a boozer. To recap, in terms of muscle building, if you drink a little alcohol, ideally not beer, you can actually boost your testosterone and boost your efforts. Too much alcohol and your performance suffers, your sleep suffers and your testosterone suffers. <laughs> you get the picture. What about fat loss? What about it? Just kidding. Look, uh, you already know too much. You know alcohol dehydrates you, which affects your recovery and performance, which limits your ability to work hard to lose that weight or build that muscle. Too much alcohol also negatively affects testosterone, which is known to help you prevent excessive fat gain. By inhibition of lipoprotein lipase and adipocyte differentiation, meaning fat gain is allowed to go uninhibited. It does seem to negatively affect the release of growth hormone, or Ramona, which your body needs in order to break fat, an essential step before burning fat. Lastly, you know it affects sleep, and it can easily raise estrogen, either directly or indirectly by interfering with melatonin through the night. Here's another problem. Elevated estrogen levels are something most people associate with moobs or chest fat in men or thunder thighs, thigh fat in women. Estrogen, as you may recall from our belly proof series, upregulates alpha-2 receptors. You remember those pesky little alpha-2 receptor monsters? Those same alpha-2 receptors found on belly fat, finger wings, love handles and thunder thighs. It's no coincidence that you hear terms like beer belly, and if you are a boozer, you're increasing your chances of storing fat in all the wrong places. Stubborn fat. Because estrogen, which misuse of alcohol will result in, will upregulate alpha-2 receptors and make your stubborn fat a lot more stubborn. If you don't want to do the belly proof program and lose stubborn fat, take our advice. Don't drink too much, and it will help you avoid putting it on in the first place. Alcohol promotes esterification of fatty acids into triglycerides. Have you watched our YouTube series? Do you know how you need to break fat before you burn it by extracting triglycerides from fat cells and then breaking them into free fatty acids? And then oxidize those free fatty acids in the mitochondria in a process we call fat burning. Remember? Well, 
Alcohol works against you by taking free fatty acids that you can still oxidize and putting them back into triglycerides and back into your fat cells. It also interferes with lipid oxidation or fat burning while it's being digested. Another more obvious thing that alcohol does is increase hunger. First, because it interrupts sleep, which makes you hungrier. By messing up with your hormone ghrelin and also because it lowers psychological inhibition. Meaning, if you drink too much, you're also very likely to snack or binge eat more often than you would otherwise. You'll probably have less self-control to be able to go to the bar and say, oh, hold on there, love. More like, yeah, let's have another one and get some fries with that too. So there you have it. Alcohol is bad, but you can enjoy it. And here's how. Regardless of your goal, whether it's overall health, muscle building, or belly proofing your fat away, follow these guidelines. One. When you drink alcohol, aim to increase glutathione, GSH, which is made out of the amino acids glycine, cysteine, and glutamic acid. Glutathione, GSH, is your body's natural way, an antioxidant, if you will, to neutralize alcohol, which is essentially a toxin. One good way to make sure you increase glutathione is to consume more amino acids or protein. Another great way is to practice fasting, as in intermittent fasting, which is a very quick way to get it regenerated. Two, alcohol is a poison. That's true. So choose your poison wisely. Avoid beer or low quality wine or spirits. If you like wine, aim to go for ones which are low in sulfates as these need additional breaking. And if you prefer to go for spirits, go for gin, vodka or whiskey something heavily distilled, ideally triple or even quadruple distilled if you can control it. Three, in terms of quantity and frequency, try not to have it every day. After all, it is a poison. When you do have it, remember, each measure of spirit or small standard glass of wine takes between two to three hours to break down fully in the body. If it's lunchtime and you just had one or two small glasses, that's cool you may even have a small testosterone boost. However, if you're at dinner and you decide to drink two large glasses of wine, well, realistically, these won't finish breaking down until halfway through your sleep, restricting the quality deep sleep that you need. This also means that you'll get all the negative effects that come with it. Four, if you are drinking in the evening, besides drinking in moderation, you need to be able to compensate with your sleep. So if you are only sleeping five, six, maybe seven hours a night, you have no business getting anywhere near alcohol. If you can afford to stay in bed longer, eight or nine hours perhaps, this should be fine. That's all there is to it, folks. You can still drink and get fantastic results in weight loss and muscle building, as long as you stick to the rules and you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Do it right and you can progress fast, even with a little moderate drinking. As always, we hope you found this video interesting and if you did, give us a thumbs up and let us know what you thought in the comment section below. And until next time, stay... Stay